Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our continuing search to find the best of the best of the Steam Workshop. In today's video, we are going to begin with one of the best of the week, which may be one of the best of the week best I have seen in quite some time. And that was a weird way of saying that. Seriously though, this thing is a little bit on the insane side and definitely going to kill a few computers. So apparently, this is a small scout mech. And oh my god, the detail level on this is absolutely insane. This has only recently been uploaded, and yeah, it's currently anchored, though it is completely capable of free movement. How is turning? Turning is not as bad as I expected, actually. Yeah, that's nowhere near as bad. Not fantastic! but certainly not the worst. So, I can see a few weak points here, which could quite easily be knocked out, but it does seem to have full shield capability. Let's allow this to get to full power, then we'll have a proper look-see at this thing. Oh, and by the way, yes, it can fly. I also now realize what I should have said is one of the best, best of the week so far. Words are difficult. I've just been trying to count how many guns this thing has, and I've pretty much gave up. It has guns absolutely everywhere. It has rail guns, it has the smaller missiles, it has the larger missiles, it has fight guns, which really throw me off because they've been done really well. It has the little sentry AI, which means, yes, this can be used as a defense turret. Let that sink in. This as a defense turret. Yeah, it has cannons on the sides, has actually quite a few of the smaller guns, which were a little bit surprising to me. You can't really see them firing unless they're actually aiming at a target. Lots of rail guns, and I'm probably missing some other weapons as well, such as the broadside cannons. An insane amount of stuff. Now, I wonder if this is using the hover glitch. I also wonder if it has any hovers, because this thing is going to be really really heavy. And yes, I know hover glitch and hovers. It obviously needs at least one hover, but will it use more than one? Will it use them to aid in its flight? Well, let's find out. So, onwards! That's actually a half decent speed. Oh no, you can turn it. It does have full flight control. Now, there is a warning on the Steam page that you do need to press... Oh, backwards and forwards to control this thing, otherwise it will sort of fall over. And it's definitely using the hover glitch as well, just to confirm that, because it can anchor from the sky instantly. Lovely. Can I turn on the spot well? Not really, but that's not exactly surprising. Hello there, tiny normal sized tech! How are you? And goodbye. <laughs> So, an actual test of DPS. Let's fight against the cube over here. I don't know how this thing bounces. Hello. Three, two, one, go! Lots of burst damage. The damage actually gets through the shields because of how many explosives there are. But there we go. Finally out of power. Yeah, that's a very decent amount of firepower. I mean, is anyone shocked? It's like made of guns. Still not sure if it has hovers or not. It does fly incredibly well, but it is using thrusters. Uh, and a lot of them. It's actually quite balanced. I am surprised. Originally, I was going to say, well, clearly this couldn't be used in the campaign. But now I'm looking at it thinking, you know what? It's not very efficient, but yeah, you could probably use this in the campaign with no major issues. I'm really sorry to the creator, but I'm actually going to tear this apart because I want to know if there's any hovers. Then, we'll go to the creative mode and see if we can get some kills with this thing. And see how it handles basic terrain. With the thrusters and the jumping, if you're careful, I bet it's okay. Just try to stick to flat areas. So, first thing in our dissection, and yes, indeed, we have gyroscopes and lots of them. That's to be expected, honestly. I don't think anyone would be surprised by that addition, since that just means it can't fall over. Once again, though, 10 out of 10 for detailing. There's a lot of unnecessary little bits of detail, which is so appreciated, though. Unnecessary, but really nice. Creator, be proud. 
And as usual, links are in the description to all of the texts we use in today's video. Just for a frame of reference for how big this thing is, please ignore all the body parts I've been cutting off. This is the Nimble Thimble, our main harvester in our current season of TerraTech, and I can't even allow the camera to face upwards enough to see its face. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty big. Well, I can't find any extra hovers, so I assume it's just because it has all of these rotors and also upwards facing rotors in addition to all of these thrusters that it just works out as well as it does. Surprisingly balanced considering it is missing an arm. Although now it's back heavy, which, um, yeah. I'm just checking how good the rotors are. Yep, these are just the rotors now, and it does slow the descent. Admittedly, it would be a bit heavier with its arm still intact and half its torso, but still. Next test before we go out into the creative mode is we are going to do the normal gauntlet of killing all of those defense turrets and seeing if we can survive. I can't see any reason why this would fail, but still, I like doing standardized tests. I'm a scientist, you know. Yeah, can't really see much issue here. Missiles for when we're too long range to actually lock on, and then everything else as soon as we are locked on. I'm tempted to spawn in something like the Nomad, which could at least take the hits. Now, the Nomad would probably win this fight because it is essentially a giant lump of batteries. This thing doesn't have as many batteries as it looks. We're already running out of charge, at least one <laughs> running out of charge. One of our battery slots are running out of charge, but that's it. A lot of this thing's size is purely for the looks and the ability to fly. There we are. One more. One more? There's like three or four left, Lathrix. What are you talking about? Ha! <laughs> it bounces on corpse parts. That's funny. Oh, the broadside cannons do have quite a long range as well, purely because of how high they are when they fire. They go quite a distance. There we are, then. So, I'll let this thing charge up. I'll spawn in the Nomad, let that thing charge up, and then turn one of them hostile, and we'll see what happens. It should... Here's the thing. Don't judge this too much. This is just because I want to see two large techs fight each other. That is really it. Ooh, I could make them both hostile to each other. Two of these fighting each other. Or I could do that instead. Both techs are unanchored. I just tried to spawn in the Nomad. The amount of lag with the Nomad and the mech will just make this near impossible. Oh god, the lag is horrendous. Is that thing flying? It's hard to tell what's actually going on right now. I have very little control over anything. <laughs> One frame per second! <laughs> Whoa! I mean, it's worth it for that, but yeah, the game can't handle this. I've got a pretty good computer, but um... Oh no! Oh, did I die? I can't fire. Oh, no, I can fire. It just... Oh, God, this is horrendous. My jetpack. My left side of my body. Take that, imposter. <laughs> that was glorious. Oh, that was awesome. I don't care about the latter way. I do care about it, but still... Look how many blocks this thing's made of. Oh. Why do you do this to me? I hurt. Heal yourself up, you'll be fine. <laughs> this bit's full off you. <laughs> oh god. Well, that was, uh... <laughs> that was pretty awesome, I gotta admit. One thing to note about that last fight is although it did bring me down to one frame per second, 
a single mech isn't actually that bad, and that is definitely points towards the mech, because honestly, normally mechs of that size cause way, way worse lag. So, yeah, right now 60 FPS, no problem. Firing, I go, I go down to 53. That's no problem at all. So I'm going to try one more time to spawn in the Nomad as well. If this doesn't work, we're just going to go over to Creative and see if this would work in the actual campaign. I have spent way too much time on this single mech, but come on! Look at it! Oh, it's already tanking a little bit. So, here comes the fight then. The Harvester with weapons versus the Flying Mech with weapons. I actually don't know who will win this. The Harvester, the Nomad, has way more battery power, but it definitely has less firepower. Well, not definitely, but it has less explosive firepower. The Birth has been the only real explosives it has. So, three, two, one. Oh, once again, frame rate. It's really- oh, bouncy. It's hard to tell what's going on. Shields are holding well. Uh, back up though a little bit. Oh no, I might need to skip ahead. Okay, the mech, yeah, just pure battery power. That is one problem with TerraTech. A lot of the time, pure battery power does win the day. Kneel before the Nomad. A very unfair fight. Don't take anything from this, by the way. Just explosives are fun. Well done. Okay. Now to creative mode. Oh! That hit in the corpse, though. Oh, that was glorious. How to have fun at nine frames per second. Okay, I'm, I am actually going to be doing this for the next maybe ten minutes. I'll uh, see you all soon. Into the game we go, sadly still with not all that much view. So in terms of flying, it's actually really easy to control, I say, whilst leaning way too forwards, but that's just my fault. I was hoping that would spawn in so I could shoot it on the way, but apparently not. I'm landing on you, come on, let's do it. There we go. <laughs> now that's how a mech should kill something. <laughs> well, it removed like half of it anyway. Bit of cheating there using the build beam, but still. Since it has missiles, it doesn't need to exactly aim at the target, which is really helpful. Whee! No! That was so slow. In three, two, one. Shouldn't do this. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, I was just stupid. So it does... Oh, it does want to fall over. Maybe I, maybe I slightly overestimated its ability in the campaign. I never said it was going to be practical, but I thought it'd be a... You know what? I still think it is. I still think it is usable in the campaign. Because you see a cliff, you just fly on over it and destroy some trees in the way. Don't fall over again! Stop proving me wrong! Oh look, a flower! That's a tree. It's a flower. Oh no, the flower's gone. Wait, you can hold a resource? <laughs> oh yeah! There's a couple of holders. Probably just there for looks, obviously, but still. So... It's going to be ridiculously fun to use. But you've got to be so careful! Oh, oh, there we go. But funnily enough, as I said earlier, it would make a fantastic defense turret. There we go. That is now a defense turret. I mean, it would certainly scare things coming into your domain. Come on, there we go. The controller went a bit weird then. That's in defense mode. So, overall verdict then. 
In terms of looks, it just wins. In terms of firepower, it's awesome. Its battery power is a little bit low for its size, but not massively, and well, there's so much going on, it's hard to say how you could possibly get more battery power without ruining half of the stuff. It can fly, and actually it's quite easy to control when flying. Overall, just a really, really fun tech. It does exactly what it's set out to do, which I say way too much in this series. So, I spent way too much time with this one, let's get on with the second one, which is in the best of all time category. So this is the second design, although it currently looks like a really stylized defense turret, which it totally could be, it's actually a hovercraft. Now I have got very, very high hopes for this thing. I love hovercraft, but I'm terrible at making them and I'm not the best at using them. I really want an easy to use, very effective hovercraft. Can this one be the hover of my dreams? For a start, it looks really nice. It looks very compact. You can see how everything goes together. And like I said at the start, it would make a really effective defense turret. Four solar panels at the back, which is nicely defended. Lots of long range weaponry. It was a single havoc shield and then several repair bubbles. It even has lasers. So either way, this is the Dirk V2. It's fairly quick. It's good at turning, in fact very good at turning, and incredibly level, at least on this nice flat bit of land. First impressions are very, very positive. Looks good and is very, very easy to use. Also very good at strafing. An impressive looking salvo, anyway. Let's see against these targets, which aren't just pure batteries. Almost instant destruction there. Once again, uh, one charge of the battery has been depleted. Its battery power seems a little bit low, I will say that as an early impression. Okay, this target, actually fire at us, let's just take some damage for a second. Yeah, that's rapidly draining our power, and that's with only a small fraction hitting us. So this is definitely more for hit and run, and for long range assault. It's definitely not there to take damage, which is understandable for something this small, which is so fast, and with such- Ooh, a decent amount of firepower. Wow, that dies amazingly. It, like, exploded in sections. Don't know if that's really a positive or anything, but still. But yeah, definitely more of a scout slash hit and run. But it is really, really easy to use. And it is very fun to use, which is definitely the most important thing there. Just can't take much sustained firepower. So it does have one ion battery there. Two, three. How many does it have? Sorry, designer, but it's time to tear this thing apart. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, is that it? Just those six? That would feel about right, honestly. Maybe it has a couple more hidden, but it has six ion batteries. That's not small. It's just not phenomenal, which is fine again. Okay, we've just got full charge. Let's see how this thing does when being used correctly. That is, don't stop moving, keep on firing at long range. It may be frail to a few hits, but the thing is, you can most likely dodge most type of weapons outside of railguns and missiles. Ah, now this enemy has a lot of battery power, which is definitely going to be a problem for this craft. Not being hit though, at least not very often. That other enemy is getting really annoying. I may target that one first because it is a little bit more frail than this one. Wow, those shells go really far.
I was going to change targets, but this one's already low on health, so come on. Now, if we wanted to, we could simply outrange the target instead. But this is more fun. And... I see it's battery getting low, and there it goes. Okay. But then, if you really wanted to, you could just realise that you have missiles and do something like this. I am fully aware, this is definitely probably the way to be using this. Much further away. Slightly angled so the front can still hit. Just slowly strafing like this. Yeah, that's definitely more efficient. And the enemy is dead. That way the front weapons can always be firing, you're still dodging the opponent's shells at this range, as you can see. And the overall firepower. It isn't the strongest, but over a moderate amount of time, this can wear off pretty much anything. Now, uh, this one has rail guns, which I'm a little bit more worried about, so once again, long range. Oh, rail guns. Still railguns. Actually dodging the railguns. User error there. And come on. So close. It's battery level so low. Just slowly strafing. That causes the enemy to fire where we were, not where we are. Missiles. Bad, bad, bad. Exploding like... On. It still explodes really well. Despite what just happened, realistically, if you really wanted to win, just stay at maximum range for your missiles and slowly strafe. Almost everything will be outranged. For instance, just then. Some of those shots are indeed hitting the target. We aren't being hit back. Simple as that. But I think I proved, though, the dodging capabilities of this thing are very, very high. So there are multiple ways of using it. So with that, let's get on over to the creative mode and see how well this would do in the campaign. I'm really hoping it handles hills well. Because if it does, then it's a really, really good hover. It already is a good hover, but that would just push it over the limit and make it a really good hover. Into the world we go, and hello there, rather large enemy. Ooh, you have Megaton Cannons. Just keep dodging, 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 what do we do? We dodge. Hi there, I'm faster than your weapons. whoops a daisy they shouldn't go over him though, that was silly. Once again, could have just outranged him, but that was way more fun. If you get good at that, as in not like me, you would be unstoppable. That is so much fun. Now testing out terrain. No problem at all. Lovely to see. Yeah, as long as I'm not using the thruster, I'm not moving forward so quickly I can't adapt to terrain, which is great to see. And it moves down so slowly, it tends not to have issues with these large dips either. My one does have issues with that, because it's much heavier than this one. In return, it has more shield power and such, but terrain actually is an issue for my hovercraft. Yeah, you can see the problem there, whereas this one just handles it perfectly. So in terms of campaign usability, 100%. Yeah, definitely bring it into the campaign, it'll be absolutely fine. And also it looks quite cheap. Only some of the weaponry is really that expensive, and maybe the Havoc Shield? But that's it. Oh, first I'm hitting the terrain. That's because I was turning to the side, not going head on. Oh, hello. An enemy has appeared just over that ridge. Hello there. Venture versus Venture, brother against brother. Oh, the horrors of war. 
Easy. Now, let's do this. This is stupid! Oh, that's cool. Again, because it takes so long to go down, it can just hover along like that, and that's lovely. The occasional bump, but we are using a hover at the end of the day. That's great. That is really, really good to see. Not the bumping part, just the overall control. Welcome to the world! You are now dead. <laughs> Hello, visual glitch. Hello, small enemy. Goodbye, small enemy. So, I've been going on for a while now. There have been hills, there have been flat areas, there's been pretty much everything in between. And, yeah, it's just really easy to use. There's a small issue with areas like this, because the hovers don't react fast enough, because the hovers aren't right at the front. But that's to be expected, honestly. I've not seen a hover so far which can deal with stuff like this that easily. And it still deals with it, look. There you go, you just need to be a little bit slower, a little bit more careful, and then you're fine with pretty much any type of terrain. So, overall verdict, it's easy to get killed in this thing. It's not the sturdiest in the world, but if you're careful with it, and you're good at playing it, unlike me, I think it's a really, really fantastic craft, and it gets a 10 out of 10 for being usable in the campaign, and not being all that expensive, so... It's fun to use, it's cheap-ish, it's on the medium side, it's easy to use in terms of travel, hard to use in combat unless you're being just extreme long-range missiles and being really, really careful about it, but it is very, very rewarding. So, I do like it. I like it a lot. And it does that, which is always fun. And with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I may be posting an extra one of these videos over the weekend since I've only covered two techs today. I always try to cover at least two, but I do go a little bit in depth with them and play around with them for a little bit too long, so I may do an extra video where I look into maybe one or two extra. It depends. Either way, really, really hope you've enjoyed. Both of these texts today were fantastic. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Links in the description.